very short welcome. Um, I thought that maybe I might be moderating this panel, but uh, every time I think that I have a chance to do something, they tell me I need to do something else. So, uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so Sarah Paletti is going to moderate this, this very, very important panel. Um, and this very, very important uh, gathering here in Geneva this week. We want to, to welcome all of you uh, again to Geneva and welcome you to this very important uh, panel as part of a, a series of panels of side events that have been organized by, by various members of civil society from the U.S. Uh, as part of the process to, to not only educate um, delegates, uh, but also to educate other members of civil society from around the world. Uh, on the perspectives, uh, the realities that we see them, uh, the challenges um, of, of U.S. human rights policy, uh, both within the country and, and externally. Um, this is another opportunity for us to, uh, to, to have our physical presence, uh, our voices, uh, and our stories and our perspectives uh, heard. Um, we have a fantastic panel of, of activists who have been involved in uh, the struggles for human rights and social justice uh, in the U.S. Um, and as we have said before in our gatherings, our intent is not to, uh, to embarrass the U.S. state. Uh, our intent is to tell our stories and to uh, represent our constituencies, uh, to represent those forces, those, those people who cannot be here in Geneva, but whose stories and experiences are, are fundamentally important. Uh, we're here to also be a, a physical manifestation of the galvanizing forces in the U.S. around the idea of human rights and human rights applying to the U.S. and human rights serving as a uh, a basis for the kind of society that we would like to see organized in the U.S. and indeed around the world. So my name is John Mubaraka. I'm the director of the U.S. Human Rights Network. Uh, many of the members uh, on this panel are uh, members of, of the network. Um, and I again want to thank you uh, this uh, afternoon for being here and we'll turn this program over to uh, the senior consultant of the uh, project, uh, Sarah Paulette. Thank you. Thank you, Ajamo. Ajamo and I are actually going to be tag teaming. Um, and, and I think the sort of reason why we're tag teaming is slightly indicative of, of why the, the work that we've been doing we feel uh, is so important. Access to the UN is not an easy thing. Uh, and access to the international community through the UN is not always an easy thing. Um, and it's really wonderful to see the, the delegation that we have here and to actually have, um, have people who have direct experiences uh, and direct contact with the communities about which we often talk about in the United Nations and whose rights are often um, honored in the breach um, and, and the rights that we talk about when we come to the UN. Um, but figuring out how to get people into the UN is why I have to step off because I've got to get my students in. Um, so we'll be doing a little bit of a, a tag team while I figure out their accreditation. Um, but I just wanted to uh, explain a little bit about the, the, this panel, which is really reflective of the work that we've been trying to do uh, in the UPR process. The Universal Periodic Review gives us a, a unique opportunity in the United States to bring to the international community issues of economic, social, and cultural rights. Um, as is no sort of secret or surprise to anyone, uh, we don't have the best track record in the United States for ratification of international treaties, uh, particularly when it comes to the international human rights treaties that touch directly on economic, social, and cultural <coughs> rights. Uh, and so we did a lot of work um, around the, the CERB review, around the Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, to highlight the ways in which economic, social, and cultural rights are um, the disparities in the enjoyment of economic, social, and cultural rights. 
Uh, but this is really our opportunity to take on those issues head on and, and talk about the right to housing and talk about the right to health care, talk about the right to decent work, but also to do so in a way that recognizes, truly recognizes the interdependence of rights um, and recognizing the ways in which racial discrimination play into the multiplicities of discrimination, about racial discrimination, gender discrimination, and poverty. When all those things come together, um, what's really, what really are the experiences on the ground and what we're looking for through this process um, is to highlight those, those rights um, and the ways in which racial discrimination, the criminal justice system, um, our obligations under international treaties that we've ratified, our obligations under the Universal Declaration on Human Rights all come together uh, and ultimately the need for real mechanisms of accountability um, and implementation so that we can have some real follow-through on these rights. I think we would, we would all agree that, that the United States has done tremendous work leading up to the Universal Periodic Review and has done more uh, in preparation for this review than I think we've seen um, before in, in any of our treaty body processes um, and, and I think that deserves to be acknowledged uh, and I think coming out of this um, our hope is that we see more than just effort going into the process, uh, but what we really see is the real change coming out of the review process and a real commitment to change, not just in the way the process is approached as a process, but the implementation of the substantive rights that we're all talking about moving forward.